All right, welcome back to Fleck of Socks, the podcast, episode 104. Today on the show, you won't believe what's on the lesson plan for these fourth graders on their first day of school. Then, Duke Hospital employees need a safe space to cry because North Carolina is banning trans sex surgery for children in this week's Cringe of the Week. Then, someone was killed over sweet and sour sauce in this week's Urban Decay. And last but most importantly, we have a massive big titty woodshop teacher update that is going to make one of us very upset. All this and more, it's Flacus Talks, the podcast, episode 104, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Welcome to the podcast featuring Richard Rabbit. All right, one for one on the intro as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at My Patriot Supply. Do you get the feeling that something bad's going to happen soon? I do. And as you know, it'll probably blindside a lot of people, but hopefully not you. That's why you need to invest in an emergency food supply kit today. As they say, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. My Patriot Supply is the nation's leader in emergency food kits. Go to preparewithfleckas.com today to get yours. And when you do, you will save $200 on a three-month emergency food kit. My Patriot Supply offers a wide variety of meals with over 2,000 calories per day. Make sure you stock up before panic sets in. Pick up your three-month emergency supply food kits today from My Patriot Supply, and your orders will ship fast and free. Go to preparewithfleckas.com today to get yours. That's preparewithfleckas.com. All right, thank you to My Patriot Supply for supporting. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. Very nice. Thank you to My Patriot Supply for supporting the show, as always. Yep. Welcome back, Richard. How was your uh, week off last week? Uh, the Friday podcast off? It yeah. was tough. We just moved to yeah. Florida. So it was U-Haul days and sweaty days. Long U-Haul days, long unloading and loading. It was brutal. We actually have a vlog that we're going to share later in housekeeping. Mm -hmm. But let's get right into some of the stuff uh, that's important right now. The first is the COVID stats. Yeah, so 99% uh, of COVID deaths not primarily caused by the virus, CDC data shows. Ah, interesting. So it's just people that people who died were just people that were close to dying already. That's what it sounds like, yeah. So it's like, remember when we locked up your businesses, shut down your schools, shut down your churches because of that really deadly virus that was going around? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the virus wasn't as deadly as we thought. Uh, by how much? How much was it off by? Uh, 99%. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> ballpark it for me. How, how bad's the damage? That yeah, was about 99%. Is, is that statistically <laughs> significant or what? It's like, all right, cool. Uh, off by 99%. Yeah. So who's going to get the death penalty for that? <laughs> Someone's got to hang, right, we're gonna guys? Go to, we're going to guillotine somebody, right? Um, yeah, published August 28th, 2023. Thanks, guys. Yeah, as they try to ramp up the pandemic again, again, possibly. Yeah. Uh, hey, dude, remember that job you were inter interviewing for back in the day? Um, they called. You start on Monday. Oh, nice. This Monday? No. No, six months ago, January, January 1st. Oh. Yeah, so have oh. fun. Good luck. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, another hoax, there was that um, thing that went around that was saying that the – Canadian churches had mass graves in them. Was that correct? Or the Catholic churches had mass graves in them? There was some sort of, yeah, there was a mass indigenous grave uh, outside of some sort of Catholic church. And then everyone was talking about it. And then basically 80 or so Catholic churches were burned down because of it mm -hmm. in Canada. This is all in Canada. And it turns out that was a hoax, too. Yeah. Oops. No bodies found yet. Oh, there wasn't a mass grave. OK, so who's going to jail for burning all the churches down? Also, nobody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we couldn't quite, you know, catch anyone in the act. And w one of the things about that is those two things, the like COVID ramping up and the churches, oh, indigenous people got wrongly killed and dumped in a big mass grave. It's like it ramped up the same type of people. Mm -hmm. The people who were like, we need to take action and go now. And you're trying to kill me. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same type of people and the steady eddies, they always yeah, win. Like the um, white supremacy, people who think about white supremacy a lot, people who think about the disenfranchised groups, the Native Americans, the indigenous people, mm -hmm. people who are, are extra cautious for COVID. It's the same Muppets. It's like the useful idiots. They ramp them up. They let them do violence and burn things down like BLM. They're ready to go. They're on standby then, for the next orders. Yeah, they're standing back and standing by. Yeah, you can say that. Um, all right, let's move on. Vivek, our boy Vivek. Ramshwami. <laughs> Vivek Ramshwami. Um, what's, it's a long tweet. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Under General uh, CQ Brown's leadership, the Air Force is trying to reduce white male pilots from 86% of its flyers down to 43% amidst a major recruiting crisis. Increasing racial discord will not help and further degrade the mission, success, and safety of the brave men and women who serve this nation. As commander-in-chief, a president's job is to keep our homeland safe and keep the men and women who defend it safe, too. We need a chairman who will make national defense about defending Americans again. I urge the U.S. Senate to reject General Brown's nomination. Not only should he not be promoted, his record shows he should be fired. So he's just yeah. making a call for the the guy who they're trying to confirm to lead the Air Force. Yeah, so they want to get they want to reduce the number of white male pilots. Yeah. Have you ever seen a pilot? They're all white guys. They're white. They're all white guys that went to the military and know how to fly a plane really good. That's what pilots are. They all have 20-20 vision. They're not too tall. They can handle the G-force. They do their little routine, and they check their, all the buttons before the fly goes. Mm -hmm. Before the fly goes, yeah. <laughs> that's who – That's oh, let's get rid of those guys and replace yeah. them with a, a lady. And it's like the one thing America has is air superiority. Yeah, Obviously, okay. there are other things. Let's but scrap that. Let's just dump it. We don't need that anymore, right, guys? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. All right. We have a lot to get to. I don't even want to tell you how many pages of housekeeping. It's a lot. Okay. It's a lot. But there's less urban decay, more housekeeping, more cringe. Kind of went a little light on uplifting gold, too. But the housekeeping is strong. So All make right. sure you guys tickle the post. Use this opportunity to help us juice the algo. Tickle the post. Like, comment, notifications. A welcome back, Fleckus. A welcome back, Rap Boy. The, the guy who counts my sips, get to work. This is sip number two and three. Yeah, someone was counting Rap Boy's sips from last episode. Don't you guys have anything better to do? <laughs> I like it. I don't want to discourage him. Yeah, we don't want to discourage it. it actually, it's, it's actually important data. Um, the Big Titty Woodshop teacher. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's over, guys. It's done. We had a good run. Uh, Kayla Lemieux ditches Z-Cup breast, shows up as a man ahead of new school year. So this guy, he switched jobs. Uh, he switched to a different school. Um, they wrote that memo, which we reported on, that there might be, you know, an interest, press interest. Mm -hmm. And basically the dream is done. He gave it up. Um, and the people who said he was doing this as a bit, as a joke, just because he could, because uh, the Canadian rules are such a joke and such a wide, like, uh, they give such a wide berth or interpretation, you know, mm -hmm. um, you guys were right and it, it's over. He's showing up as a man. Um, I don't think I'm waiting for the, he admits it and goes, see how stupid Canada is. See how easy it was to pull a fastball over you idiots. That would be great. But he's probably got a great paying shop teacher job with a pension and he wants to make it to age 55. So yeah, he could do cameo with the huge cans Ooh. and make like 500 K. I think so. But um, he maybe, I think he was doing the bit the whole time. He also looks like a RRB doppel. Yeah. Um, he was doing the bit and then it started picking up steam both in the media and everywhere else on the internet. And he goes, whoa, what have I opened? It was a yeah. monkey's paw situation. So sorry the, for your loss. I know the run is over. Those, those big titties, you know, they're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it's like that saying, you know, it's so over. But also, we're so back. Like, you know how it goes back and forth? Yeah. Like, it's so over because the cans are gone. But we're so back because now this guy is just going to school as a normal guy again. Yeah. So it's both. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some of uh, po more politics. Uh, Joe Biden lies. Uh, KJP had a quote the other day, which I thought was just like. So, just in our face. So, like, you're not even going to pretend to lie a little bit better? The president has done more to secure the border and to deal with this issue of immigration than anybody else. He really has. <laughs> it's like, 
What kind of psycho statement is that? Who the fuck are you talking Have to? Have you seen the videos of all the people coming across the open border? Have you seen the, the videos of the people camped out in like town hall? El Paso, and like, Chicago police departments. Like, There's just a billion people everywhere. What and, are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, oh I, I guess there's like a little gray area where they play on where it's like, oh, yeah, it's not illegal if they all claim asylum at the same time. So it's like illegal immigration. Yeah. It's actually down. It's way down. <laughs> but like the bodies are flowing. <laughs> 10 million asylum seekers, but illegal immigration is basically zero yeah. because we tell them before they get to the border what to say. Then we have them throw out their passports yeah. and their ID. There's various non-governmental <laughs> organiz organizations who are advising them on exactly the best way to get left into the country. Yeah, exactly. So. And then we have like the Washington Post fact checker. Here's a guide to some of the stories told by President Biden that cannot be verified or are not plausible. So like that's how they treat him when he tells like his personal stories. They're like, oh, yeah. some some are inaccurate. Can't verify it. Can't call it either way. You yeah. Know? And then Trump's false or misleading claims total 30,573 over four years. So they got every single one. Trump yeah. did. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Fun living here. Mm -hmm. It's not even fun anymore, dude. Washington Post, like, it, it, you used to catch a news publication being biased and be like, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, we know, Kareem Jean-Pierre, he's done the most for the border. It's like punching you in the face with such negative and misinformation, you know? Yeah, um, and it's not even, they used to try to hide it a little bit or censor it. Now they just lie to your face. And if you like it and you believe it, great, that's for you. And if mm -hmm. you don't, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, let's go to the Proud Boys situation. Um, Joe yeah. Biggs from the Proud Boys gets 17 years. Yeah, uh, second longest. Uh, second longest in the January 6th like uh, sentencing portion. Um, 15 years and 17 years in multiple cases. Some sentences. And he has just got a handed kid, down. a young daughter that he can't see, and mm -hmm. all he did was like pull down a fence or something. Yeah, uh, Drano had a good tweet about it. A Proud Boys leader got 17 years in prison for tearing down a fence on January 6th. A New York lawyer got 15 months for firebombing a police car during the BLM riots. Yeah. Remember the Molotov cocktail lady? Yeah. 15 so. months for throwing a Molotov cocktail at a police car. But you move a fence on mm -hmm. January 6th. And then obviously no one got in trouble for BLM. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, the two sets of laws two multi tier justice system. And that's what makes people go crazy. Exactly. And you know what? You guys got to play by those rules. You know, if you do something outside of uh, what's ordinary, expect the full extent of the law to come down in the name of politics, you know? So that's why we move out of uh, New Orleans to Florida. Yeah. So Rob DeSantis can protect us. Yeah, he gets rid of the DAs, this George Soros DA, so, <laughs> so Robbie protects us. And then us. when we get in trouble, then we have to get help from DeSantis. We're still going to maintain our DeSantis not for president energy. Mm -hmm. Of course. Saying, Rob, that's just true. Yep. But don't let me get in trouble. Let's read the despair thing. Uh, Owen Benjamin had a great tweet that was kind of reminding me of what's going on lately. Uh, uh, he I, said, you go for it, yeah. He said, just talk to my Russian friend. Despair was the main weapon they used to destroy Russia in the 1980s through 2000. It ruined generations. It's actually a weapon. And clearly it's aimed at America right now. Don't engage in it or indulge in it. It's poison. That rings true to me. Stay white-pilled. Yeah, stay white-pilled even though they steal the election and force you to get vaccinated and shut your business down and steal all the money and give it to Ukraine yeah. and let everyone in over the border and they burn down the whole country. 99% of COVID deaths were really with COVID. But you have to stay you have to stay white pills because if you stay white pill then you could be motivated to have a family and then if you have a family your sons can deal with the problem. Agreed. <laughs> you need four sons. Exactly. Um, let's go to the Doja Cat became a full demon. Yeah. I don't really care for stuff like this, but I don't care for stuff like this too. Um, but you know how trans people say, "Oh, I'm mass presenting," yeah, or I'm femme presenting. Yeah, Doja Cat just became a demon. She's demon presenting. That's fair. And she has a new album called Demons. Really? Yeah. And I don't just, stay up on Doja Cat that much. Yeah. So congrats to the demon on a successful body takeover. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got in. It was you, easy. You got you got a full one, yeah. and you're a full demon. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, the new place that uh, we're at in Florida has a pool. Mm -hmm. And I've come to the realization that society has not figured out how to dry a dog quickly. That's what I'm realizing. So we're on Amazon trying to find ways to – because the, the dog goes in the pool and then he goes in the house. And it's like if you go on the couch or on the bed or the carpet – 
It, it's not good to have wet dog around. You got to leave him in purgatory for a while to dry. Yeah, off. you got to leave him in the. I call it the box, which is his cage. I say get in the box, and then you know he has to wait there. Um, but you know, hair dryer in a bubble suit. Yeah, mm, haven't figured it out That's yet. That's the best we got. Then, it's, or the other option is the dog needs to wear a robe. Yeah, maybe back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the only option I've seen that actually makes sense is just shaving the dog. And then you <laughs> use a towel on, like, skin. <laughs> so that's the only thing that's worked so far. Yeah. Um, all right. Speaking, nice. of, <laughs> speaking of ideas, I have an idea for James O'Keefe. It's a borderline game show. But it, and he kind of already does this. But imagine, like, really leaning into it. He has whistleblowers, right? Imagine you have a whistleblower come forward, and then you crowdfund a reward. So, for example... I work at Best Buy. I have proof that they're being discriminate. They're discriminating against white people in their hiring process. I come forward as a whistleblower. Everyone goes, "Oh my gosh, that's so bad!" Here's money. Here's money. Here's money. Crowdsource money. Now I make two hundred grand for when I get fired or when I quit my Best Buy job. Mm. And you get like a good payout. You're more motivated to be a whistleblower. So the more whistleblowers that come forward, oh, I work at Pfizer. The vaccine kills everyone, and they know it. Cool. Two million dollars. That's a fat bounty. That's yeah. a fat bounty. So you do it like that. And then it'll encourage more whistleblowers, high level whistleblowers who are like, hey, I'll lose my job, but I'm going to make three million bucks. Yeah. And then and, it becomes like a game show. And also James O'Keefe gets to be a little theatric. Yeah. So we know he likes that. Purple, yeah. purple suit type thing, old 70s Some game show. Some soupy sales type shit. Show me the bounty. <laughs> <laughs> 300000 And you can almost raise money live. Like, let's come on, guys. This Hit guy. those phones. <laughs> Hit the and we could call people on the phone and raise money. Hey, James O'Keefe, if you want to talk more about this idea, you can have it. Yeah, that's fine. All right, moving on. Burning Man, people are trapped. We're not going to get too deep into this, but don't forget that fashion show Kanye West did where everyone was walking through the mud. Yeah. That could have been foreshadowing. That could have been a thing. And then if there is like a, a zombie pandemic that comes out of Burning Man, they they did it. Kanye was in tune. He, yeah. He tried to warn us. Okay. okay. All right. Next thing. Not the best news right Couldn't here. Couldn't have happened to nicer people. The Burning Man crowd. Yeah. I don't really care. It's not like, oh, Hawaii is burning. It's like Burning Man got fucked. I yeah. don't really care. Oh, I, I, I brought strawberries and I'm going to trade for sandals. <laughs> it's like, all right, bro, you're four days into mud and the yeah. toilets overflowed. Ration your water, buddy. Strawberries are gone. Good luck. Um, I got some kind of bad news, but not that bad. Actually, we started drinking Diet Cokes again. You know, we broke the habit originally. It wasn't even that hard. It wasn't a big deal. Show we could do it. And now we're. You kinda... go to Costco and you see the 35 rack of Diet Coke and you get them. That's it. It's that simple, guys. So we broke the habit. We, we quit drinking them. Check. Now we can drink them again. Exactly. <laughs> I, I think, think that's, that's how it, it works. All right. Um, you know that old meme? Every time I go to Target, I for one thing, I end up leaving and it's 150 bucks. Of course. We went to Target because uh, we just moved into a new house, so that's what you do. Three hundred bucks yeah. is the new one fifty. Yeah, the whole oh trip to Target, it's a hundred bucks every time. And I almost didn't go because of the gay twink shit they did with the kids. Oh um, uh, yeah, but I kind of had to. Um, we just had to, and it was the most expensive waste of money ever. So I will not be ever going again. And Target sucks too. Everything is like plastic. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's the, it's the same hustle as Walmart. It's just they they make you feel better about it. Like, it's yeah. all Chinese plastic. It's all Chinese plastic crap products. Yeah. They all break. All right, really quick. Gorlock the Destroyer. There was a post we saw on iFunny, and it says, I think that the guy who coined the term Gorlock the Destroyer should come out and let the whole internet pay its respects. That was Richard. That yeah. was Richard like two months ago. Yeah. He tweeted it. Here's the tweet that went super viral, got millions and millions of views. Um, Gorlock the Destroyer, Richard did that. Yeah, feels good to hit a dinger. The whole world is talking about Gorlock the Destroyer. Like, that person will be on other podcasts, and they'll go, oh, this is Gorlock the Destroyer. The branding at the right time really stuck, and it feels like a, a cultural win, you know? Yeah. Especially because that's just a guy. Yeah. That's just a really fat Mexican guy. <laughs> yeah. So. so congrats to Richard. The whole You got the whole world talking about something. Yeah. That's hard to do. It reminds mm -hmm. me of when I got Jerry Nadler that time mm. to say Antifa is a myth. Yeah. Basically the same level of like the whole world's talking about one thing. I think Hannity still runs that clip. 
Oh, yeah. Like Hannity. It's on Fox every once in a while. For sure. Uh, let's go to the uh, the gay Trump, anti-Trump guy. Yeah, let's see what he's up to. Let's see what he's up to. It's so scary. I, I'm just scared doing this right now. Like, it's scary because it's like if you go against Trump, like, you're, you're over. Kyle Clare is a young Iowa conservative afraid to voice his true opinion on Trump in front of other Republicans. Let's get this guy. They don't guy. want to believe he lost the election. It's hard to swallow. Losing is hard to swallow. Claire says too many Trump supporters are ignoring what really happened on January 6th. You, you know why they don't have an issue on January 6th? Because they, didn't, they haven't watched the tapes. President Trump sat in the Oval Office for two hours watching our nation, a symbol of our nation's democracy being attacked, watching police officers being attacked, watching people chant for the death of Vice President Mike Pence. God damn it. And while Claire is frustrated that Republican leaders aren't calling out Trump, he says he understands why candidates like Governor Ron DeSantis are hesitant to. I'm sure he's scared to. I'm scared to. Think about him. He has to worry about getting people's votes. I don't have to worry about getting people's votes, but I'm still scared to. What a little twink. Another theatric homosexual Ron DeSantis guy? I don't, I don't What are we doing here? <laughs> Another Ron DeSantis homosexual <laughs> mafia member? I like when the content comes out like this random guy from Ohio who's gay and freaking <laughs> out. It's like, yeah, we need to listen to him. All right, cool. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, Thank you. Listen to Claire. The twist 20-year-old caddy homosexual <laughs> delivers a death blow to the GOP MAGA base. Okay, buddy. All right. Um, that's it. I just want to make fun of that gay guy. Yeah, that clip. Come on. Yeah. Rod, Rod DeSantis, make sure you get that guy paid. Yeah. Get him on the payroll. Get him advising you at the highest level, please. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. You guys know Rohit, right? No yeah. fizzy drink for me today. Uh, Rohit, I don't want to say he's in some hot water, uh, but he's you can he was kind of accused of drinking fizzy drinks. <laughs> Hello everyone, no fizzy drink for me today. You know I have mentioned before that I still buy fizzy drinks for my wife or for guests or for someone else. Today I was at the drive through of a fast food chain and the girl handed me the glass of fizzy drink and she said, I love your videos because she recognized me. So I said, thank you very much. And I'm having a fizzy drink from you. And she said, yeah, I know. And I said, don't worry, it's for my wife. But anyway, then I took the fizzy drink, came home, gave it to my wife. I even washed my hands after that. But the main point is I was really, really happy feeling that, that I'm out of addiction and I felt really powerful, being honest, very determined because of what you guys have made me. So big thank you to you guys once again. If I was near fizzy drink. So do you believe him? I don't know. I don't know either. I, I, I believe him. I need to see lips to straw to yeah for him to really make me turn. I'd like to see Rohit try heroin. <laughs> He's talking about 1,200 days of fizzy drinks. I think he would go off the rails. He would love heroin. <laughs> oh. He would love Trank. <laughs> so I believe him, but imagine, imagine you see your hero. Yeah, at the drive-through, ordering his whole a fizzy identity drink. is about not doing the thing you're saying. And him he's do. like three fizzy drinks, please. <laughs> it would it could break the wrong person's it's heart. My wife, my sister, and my mother-in-law. Yeah, like, and they're at home. Yeah. Okay, buddy, trust me. Let's do the uh, kick demonstration, the kitchen kick demonstration. Good. Yeah. This yeah. looks like it's gonna work. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have anything prepared for that. It's just... Of course. Of course that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. You kicked a plate into a guy's face. It was meant to break and you're holding it here. Of course. Of course. Yeah. All right. We have a snarf snarf opportunity. We have two snarf snarf opportunities. Okay. Um, the first one... So everyone who doesn't know, we on the show are trying to get things named Snarf Snarf or Snarf Snarf O'Banion. The fictional character we created doing a no jumper type headline who's a yep. rapper. Yep. Yep. So then whenever something comes up and it's like, help us name this bridge, help us name this giraffe or whatever it is, we rush to the comments and we call for Snarf Snarf to be the name. Yeah. Uh, so our first opportunity is the first of its kind ultra surf coaster coming to the thrill capital of the South. Six Flags, Georgia. Six Flags, Georgia. Uh, they said, what should this be called? The name of the coaster. I think it should be called the Snarf, Snarf, Snurf Coaster. Yeah. The Snarf, Snarf, Surf Coaster. Smart. Um, and that makes sense. And if everyone comments it, they're going to go, I don't know what this even means, but people kind of like the name Snarf, Snarf. 
Uh, then also there's a police dog, the Princeton Police Department from Massachusetts. There's a new little boy going into the police force. Thank you for your service. Looks like a chocolate lab type. Looks like a chocolate lab type, which is a kind of like a snarf snarf. Yeah. <laughs> That's a snarf snarf little boy. Yeah. He snarfs. So those are linked in the description. Please get in there uh, and help us name him Snarf Snarf. Yeah. All right. Last piece of housekeeping before we get into Cringe of the Week. This was a very important, long housekeeping. We did our trip from New Orleans to Florida. Ten hours in the U-Haul. Tell hey, tell him about tell him about what the the show I put on. Fleckus, I will say, Fleckus put on a clinic of moving the U-Haul, backing in. He's actually a mover type as well. Mm -hmm. He just powers through stuff and he lifts like a couch and he does a single leg squat up into the U-Haul. So I get this thing where I just get the thing because people move and they kind of like pussyfoot around it. They, they, they're light in the boots and they kind of just like move things here and there. I am like, I just get into a zone where I just get the thing and it's just like, it clicks in my head and I just, and I just move it. He's no fully how, sweating. He's yeah. he 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 doesn't take no for an answer. Like a mattress up a tight spiral staircase. It call it's called just gets it done. And it's like some people would look and go, oh maybe if we turn it or like maybe. And I just like grab it and I just go up the stairs mm -hmm. until it's up there. Fleck has put on a clinic both in the physical moving and the U-Haul driving, which yeah. was great because I didn't have to drive. We, we arrived at like midnight. It's a twenty-six foot truck. Mm -hmm. And then I backed into a very narrow driveway from a very narrow road. So I had to go, whoop, whoop. Yeah. And I brought it all the way back. It was really good. All about the mirrors, obviously. Uh, it's in my bones. My dad used to move stuff uh, like in college and in between, like in high school too, drove a truck, used to move stuff with his buddies as like a summer job. So it's in the DNA. It's a blessing and a curse, though, because now anytime there's another U-Haul need, you got to step up and do yeah, it. Yeah, that's all right. I'm so. ready for it. And then when I was leaving, there's like this. Um, so we're leaving New Orleans. There was like this horrible, annoying woman that lived a couple doors down. Oh. And she thinks me and Richard Rapway are gay because one time I was on vacation um, and Rapway went to my place to like just check in on it and make sure it was OK. And then I saw her after and she goes, oh, yeah, you've been gone for a while. I saw your partner here a few days ago. <laughs> and I just said, oh, yeah, OK. Like, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was talking to her before as like the trucks loaded and we're saying, I'm like, oh, you know, we're moving to Florida. And she goes, oh, that other guy, too. I was like, yeah, he lives down there. We're moving. We're going to St. Petersburg. And she was like, wow, that's a pretty big step moving to a new city together. I just said, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it is. That's a big step. I just didn't feel like correcting. I just yeah. Said, yeah, it is. It's a big step. Oh, I think being gay to a <laughs> random neighbor who we don't even like is a little better than her finding out about this podcast. Yeah, and exactly. Understanding the opinions we really have exactly. towards the gays and, you know, yeah. others. A, no, new city, new city together. That's a big step. I was like. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then we were joking. You met the neighbor over here. Uh, you said, oh, yeah, that's my business partner. I'm living with my business partner. Nobody fucks anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't say that. We're but. not going to. We don't fuck. Um, yeah. So basically, the way I see it, like I moved to Florida. We moved to Florida in 2020. That was kind of like act one. Things were good. We're coming to the election. Things are going our way. The country's coming back. Then act two, they steal the election. They do COVID. They do all these horrible things. We go to New Orleans and hide out and grind out, get to 100 episodes. And now we return for act three. This is act three, the return. And this is the victory. This is where we win. This is where we win this election coming up. And then we go into a golden age renaissance. Oh. Or they steal everything again and we head to the woods. Back to step one. Yeah. So we have a vlog from the trip. It's not that It's nothing. Good. We didn't do it's anything. Not, yeah, it's bad. But basically, here's the first night. Um, the After we packed the U-Haul, uh, we had to sleep on an air mattress on the floor, and my air pump didn't work. So I just put my air mattress on top of Jerry's bed and <laughs> stole Jerry's bed. Uh, and then here's me driving in the rain. <laughs> He's not on his Vespa, boys. This happened to Rob, Miami Beach, in a business meeting, and then he was riding his Vespa, and then it started raining, like, you know, how far the rain is. And then next thing you know, Rob's in his Vespa in the downpour after a business meeting at Miami Beach. There's the Hermicain. Oh, watch out. Hermicain, watch out. The Hermicain, they clear the roads. This is so hard to drive. Oh, there's going to be a hurricane. You're stupid, they said. 
Yeah, it was fucking yesterday. <laughs> Rob's got his cack out. This is some good. <laughs> Rob's got his cack out. Hey, this is where we live now. The Quality Inn, because you were pulling. You were pulling, so that's why we live here now. There's Jerry drooling. But that was it. That was yeah. the trip. It wasn't a vlog. It was a miserable driving situation. Jerry was in between my feet. Um, yeah, it was tough. And yeah, we, we, whenever we told Jerry we were moving. Every time he saw us, like the, we saw us packing up, he knew something was happening. And we said, it's because you pull on the leash. And then also, um, there was a certain number of people, we won't name names, saying, you're driving through a hurricane. You're driving right. It's like, we're driving the day after a hurricane on the interstate. The most important road that exists in Florida after a hurricane, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't think they have crews cleaning up? Mm. You don't think they get the big giant trees that fall off the road? So everyone else, you know, save your tips for yourself. We yeah. handled it. We handled it. Exactly. It sucked because there's a certain point you just have to put the hours in. There's no getting around it. That's all road trips. You have to do the do the time. It's it like a prison 10 sentence. hours, yeah, yeah. And we just ate it. And then we kept looking at the clock, and it was bad. But we got here, and we got it done, kept it 100. Well, that's the end of housekeeping. It was a great housekeeping. Uh, before we get into Cringe of the Week, I'm reminding you guys to join FleckusTalks.com. If you missed last week's public episode that we didn't do on Friday, and you're like, damn, I miss Fleckus and Rap Boy, what can I do? You could have joined FleckusTalks.com and gotten a 40-minute Q&A and a 30-minute bonus land. And at this point, there's a huge backlog of you know a lot I mean? of content. This last month, we did over three hours of FleckusTalks.com exclusive content. Yeah. So you get, how many shows? Uh, we get two a week. So we get eight hours of show a week, basically. And then last month, it was three hours of bonus content. We did four bonus lands, and then a Q&A, a, Q &A, Doyle, a John Q Doyle interview. It's like three plus hours of, of bonus land content. So you guys need to join that. You're missing out if you're not. First month is free. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Please join. It's a lot of fun. Join the community. And you get in the Discord group. There's a Discord group. We're active in that now. Join the Discord. It's a lot of fun. Let's get into Cringe of the Week. All right. First clip of Cringe of the Week, the lesbian pronoun day one of school teacher. Cool. My name is Teacher Roby. I am non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. For example, they are a great art teacher. They taught us how to draw a stitch. Many of you they are wearing a fucking hat, basketball shorts, and a t-shirt. Yeah. I kind of dress like that too, but not in front of a bunch of kids. A hat as uh, a yeah. teacher? Exactly. That's a, not an appropriate teacher outfit. And then there's so many old school teachers, I'm sure, that are still teaching that remember how it used to be back in the day. I remember there was a teacher in one of my schools who had a, who had too much Yankee stuff mm. on the walls. It was just too much. Yeah. And then they the one day it was kind of just like toned way down and taken down and only had a couple of things on his desk. The principal talked to him, had to talk to him. He probably got in a little bit of trouble. This person's dressing like how I dress to sit around the house. You already know that about me. Pronouns are super important for myself, for you. It's important that we get it right every single time. If you ever make a mistake, I'll just politely correct you. And you should also be making sure that you use those correct pronouns. Um, if you have so this is about the that, we first all, thing right? of the school year for 2023 school year. This is the first thing that these fourth graders are being taught. Yeah. By the art teacher. Yeah, she uh, she actually replaced the part where how parents can contact her with this. <laughs> so now the parents can't even reach out, and then she's doing this. Yeah, um, it, it would be like a teacher coming to school and talking about hot rods the whole day because he likes hot rods. Yeah, dude, I just, you know, the turbo, they got the <laughs> NOS on it. It's like, can you teach us? It's it's your personal passion, yeah. and it's yeah. getting in the way. Mr. Smith, uh, it's great that you like hot rods, but please get back to the math. Yeah, Constantinople, how did it, how did it fall? And he goes, well, it was basically like a NASCAR race. <laughs> but, you know. It's just like someone's whole identity and uh, passion is wrapped up in this stupid thing that wastes everyone's time. And yeah, fourth graders, guys. And the world would would be better if lessons like this were taught to when she was a kid or whatever. So that's what they're trying to do is like correct history again. Yeah. 
Uh, Elon's daughter actually has a like a lesbian teacher of some sort. Yeah, Elon Musk blames elite LA school for brainwashing communist trans daughter into hating him for being rich. So nobody's safe. Yeah, it can happen to literally one of the smartest, most impressive men on earth. The as, richest man in the world. As long as they get a little bit of separation from you and start uh, pooing in their brain yeah. with the nonsense, then, uh, you know, nobody's safe. Isn't that crazy? The richest guy, one of the smartest people in the world, he can have his own daughter turned on him by some idiot who went to, like, Marist. And he knows the teacher. He goes, that's it. Mix Smith yeah. fucked up my kid. Um, I, if I was Elon and I'm the richest guy on earth, I'd spend a lot of money to make that person's life a little bit hellish. That's you know? a good idea. And it's pennies to him, but, yeah. uh, you know, a little revenge. That's smart. That's so. what's needed. Uh, let's go to the kids protesting pride, uh, in the middle school. Yeah. There's a, a tale of two cities here, I guess. Displays of intolerance and homophobia are unacceptable. This type of intolerant rhetoric starts in the home. Parents angry at town hall over intolerance at Marshall Simons Middle School. Kids were asked to wear rainbow clothes in honor of Pride Spirit Day, but some organized a counter protest wearing red, white and blue or black. The principal sharing a statement to families that Pride posters were ripped down, stickers ripped up, some students chanted USA are my pronouns and students showing Pride were intimidated. It was an unruly disruption. In fact, there she was is. organized ahead yeah, of time. That's While her. some parents were upset, others say it was overblown. Some of the kids threw the stickers on the ground. But, you know, I can only speak for my daughter. She just, she didn't want to wear that to school. It's not that she wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. She says her daughter felt coerced to participate in the Pride event and was offended by some of the messages, like this quote from Tennessee Williams. Human heart cannot be straight. It is curves and winds. And my daughter just kind of said, you know, Mom, that's... That's offensive to to me, who I am. Yeah, so that's good to see the kids can bring it. You can tell who's got based families, mm -hmm. like you, that other kid from last week. And then everyone everyone needs to be enthusiastically celebrating pride. It's yeah. not something where it's like, oh, you know, well, naturally we accept some, you know, we don't make the freak emo kids go to homecoming, the homecoming yeah. football game. It's like, no, they just go off there to the side. And it's yeah. the same thing for pride. But inverse, they're like, we need everyone to be enthusiastic and dress up for that weird thing only some percentage of the population exactly. cares about. And it's like that that lady was the the teacher who said, oh, it was a whatever, an enthusiastic. Disruption. Yeah, an enthusiastic disruption. Like, that's the one who did it. So basically, it's like everyone's a little gay, right? Yeah. No. Okay, well, we all support and love what gay people are up to, right? Like No. no. Also, no. Yeah, no. Well, let's just all give the gay kid a kiss. Yeah. Go back to class. It's like the state enforced homosexuality. Um, it's basically coming through the school level at this point. Yeah, and you know who the 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 lady trying to do the longhouse is? She's there on camera. You know exactly who it is. And then the hot blonde mom, yeah, with a nice kid and probably a a good dad, yeah, is the one who's on camera. So that's what we like it's, to it, see. Communism and leftism. It's always been ugly freaks trying to steal everything you have. If mm -hmm. you're successful and good looking, exactly. Let's go to the next guy who gives advice for. Trans kids? Yeah, this is good shit. Did you know that if you have family that isn't LGBTQ affirming, that won't use your correct name or pronouns, or that won't let your partner come home with you, you can just not go home, not see them. If you need permission, this is it. So that guy's saying, yeah, just leave the people who love you unconditionally. Abandon your family. Abandon your family because they won't call you the dumb shit that you thought of and found on TikTok. They won't call you she if you're a he. Yeah, you know those 10 people you talk to on Reddit? They're your family now. <laughs> Will they pick you up when your tire blows out on the side of the road? Well, no. Yeah. Will they bail you out of jail if you accidentally get into yourself into some trouble? Also, no. Yeah. Run away from home. Live in a tent with people on fentanyl and from El Salvador. Yeah, just as long as you get away from your homophobic father. <laughs> yeah. That's the important thing, Let right? Let society raise you. Boys hey. are girls. Bad guys are good guys. Lizzo's hot. Some twink gave you permission on the internet. <laughs> Abandon ship, right? <laughs> Abandon your family. It's one of the problems with this, like, kind of throwaway, need 100% agreement. Like, if I went out to a dinner with, like, some middle-of-the-road political people, I, I'm on this podcast. I have very specific views. Do you think I bring it up? Mm. Do you think I shoehorn it into everything? No, I don't. 
You tone it down. And yeah, if you have a, a di- disciplinarian dad who's old school, he's a mechanic, he works on fucking diesel big rigs. Like, yeah. th- maybe don't do the twink shit in front of him, right? Mm-hmm. Have a little respect for the people who came before you. You're not right. You you don't know more than like society Everything needs to be twink friendly everywhere mm-hmm. at every time. But it's like, what other hobbies or life like ways of living are ever like that? Zero. Zero. So. But they, they, theirs is the one. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to the safe space for the people crying at Duke. Uh, so this is from Lips of TikTok. They said, Scoop, Duke Health is offering employees a safe space to process their feelings about North Carolina banning sex change surgeries for minors. Some doctors are very sad that young, confused minors won't be able to get their healthy body parts chopped off. That's the editorial. Um, but yeah, you know that thing that only came up like five years ago? Mm-hmm. That was kind of an experiment the whole time? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting rid of it for kids only. Oh, yeah. So, so if like you need to cry about that. I need a padded room. I might self-harm as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so Why now, don't we just lock it from the outside then, too? <laughs> yeah. So there's a safe place for, for employees to cry. For, like, doctors, nurses, administrators to, like. The people who see people die. Exactly. There's a safe place for them to cry because kids can't cut their genitals off and switch their genders in one state. Mm-hmm. That mean Republican governor. Yeah, have fun explaining that to the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are fucked. Yeah. Um, and isn't that so funny? Like, you need a safe space for something that only existed in the last five years or whatever, and then go- it went like this, and it went back to where it was. So, yeah. crazy. Let's move on. We have more people crying. Um, this person is crying because they got misgendered. We have like a whole section of people crying. Honestly, don't know what to do, but like... There was like a really bad experience. Basically, I was just getting a drink at the bar and they called both Azul and I ladies. After they were done making the drink, I went up and I I was like, some people don't refer to themselves as ladies, but it's okay that you didn't know. And in a gay bar, so it should be safe to banter to around. They got so mad at me, and they took the drink away from my wife and I. My yeah. wife. <laughs> Just two ladies at a gay bar, right? Two ladies at a gay bar. Someone said, hello, ladies. And then <laughs> she started crying. Something so bad happened. You know, if a normal person was trans, it's like almost like an oxymoron, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if but I, I can imagine for a second. Yeah. I can suspend this like belief. Imagine being a rational person and you're trans and you look like a girl and then someone calls you ladies. Yeah, she's not even not, she's not even dressing non-binary. Right. You know what non-binary is. Stupid earrings, short hair, right down the middle, androgynous as yeah, it gets. Yeah, androgynous, buzzed head. Uh, so it's like if someone was rational and trans or whatever this person is and they were called the wrong thing according to them – you could go, oh, that's all right. I kind of look like a girl. Not everyone's familiar with this. It's less than 1% of the population. You got it wrong. Maybe some people will get it right, but I'm not bugging out. Yeah. It's actually, I'm actually non-binary. You know, the world's going to take time to process this. You know, over time, it'll probably get better towards us. Yeah. No biggie. But not when you're dealing with this instead of a rational person. This is an adult baby, it's called. Yeah. So that's the difference. No reasonable expectations. Just a person who's an adult baby. It's yeah. Like an Indian person going to McDonald's and going, why? What are they doing in here with all this cow products, all this beef, all this meat? This is so bad. You need to stop. We need to stop this now. Yeah. Um, I think I don't think I'd cry like that if the, I was getting one of those like medieval tortures. Like mm. they'd be flaying my back and I'd go, ah, <laughs> like I wouldn't even cry like that. <laughs> we have another crier. The lady got fired or not even fired, just had an incident at work. This is my favorite clip. Employers need to know how to treat people who are autistic. My manager told me to do a task and I did the task how I thought she meant, but she didn't mean it that way. And she got mad at me and told me to do it the right way. And so like just the way she talked to me like made me feel like I did something way too wrong. And it sent me into a meltdown in the bathroom. And then I come out and I talk to one of my coworkers and I'm like so crying and like shaky and I'm like, I think I need to go home. 
And he was like, yeah, that's a weird call you can make. Like, just ask her. It'll be fine. So I ask her to go home. She barely looks at me, snaps at me, and says, yeah, I guess so. And then I just leave. And she doesn't even look at me, doesn't do anything. And it's just like, it's such a little thing. But at the same time, it's like, nothing I do is right. Like, if you want me to So do if you look at this from the, the boss's point of view, you told the person to do something. They botched it, did it completely wrong. You corrected them. They started crying and asked to go home early. Shaking, crying, and had to go home. That's basically as bad as an employee can be. That's a full write-off. Yeah, you I told you to do something. You did it wrong. Now you're crying, and now you're leaving, and we have one less employee. I'm, Fun working with you, buddy. I'm going to have to let you go. I, <laughs> and if you let her go, you know it'll be some wrongful employment, whatever. Yeah. That kind of thing. American Disabilities Act, because she's got autism. That's yeah. diagnosed like very loosely, probably over Skype. <laughs> it was yeah. probably diagnosed over Skype. Um, or self-diagnosed from TikTok. Yeah. Autistic people, I didn't think, really cried like that. They're yeah. a little more robotic. Yeah. Uh, but there's all types, according to this girl. And one of the things is whenever they talk about uh, these crybabies who come to social media, they go, I was doing a task. And then I did it wrong. And then they yelled at me. And it's like, well, what was the task? Give me specifics here. How bad did you fuck up? Yeah. You know, I want to know what it was. She told me to stack the juice boxes. And then I fucking just knocked everything over. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to know the specifics. The scoop of ice cream. Yeah. Tones. Like, yeah. here you go. I want to know the specifics before I just start generally agreeing with you. And obviously, this isn't the type of girl that we'd ever generally agree with. Yeah. But uh, they leave that out on purpose. That's the type of person who wants $25 an hour mm -hmm. working at the coffee shop. She's track. going on strike at Foxy Roxy. Yeah. And another note to kind of keep in mind, autistic people could technically be Gen 1 AI human computer hybrids. That's good. I'll keep that in mind for next you know? time. Yeah. You know, like, maybe like in the future. T-1000 series type yeah. shit. Like yeah. A bunch of people in the future could be like computer human hybrids. Then you look back and it's like, oh, yeah, like AI like inseminated people in a way with like metals. Mm. And that's how they got the first human computers back in the day. And then it could grew to something way worse. For sure. Could be. Could be. Let's yeah. move on. Let's get out of cringe. And let's what move about this one? Into urban decay. What about this one? I really want to do this one. All right, let's do it. All right. Where I went to bed wishing that I would wake up with breast cancer so that I could get a mastectomy and have a flat chest. This is the first time that I've ever heard somebody say that out loud. But, oh my god, that is so real. Like, that is so relatable. So real. Well, who cares? Why does is, why is this dude care about trans people? Yeah, what's this guy talking about? I like this guy. Yeah, he seems me and chill. this guy could be buddies. I could see it. It's one of the bros. That guy's chill. Yeah, no biggie. Yeah, no biggie at all. I don't all right, even... now, I don't know why we came back to this then. Yeah, I don't even know why we're watching that. It's just but... guys being guys. Is this dude, I guess, is looking out for trans people. Yeah, he must be an ally or something. I don't know. Uh, men are protective. Yeah, I guess so. That's one of the boys. Oh, are we doing this Uganda thing, too? This Ugandan sex thing? Or no? Uh, yeah, we can while we're here. This is just like everybody who's been on Twitter has seen this, but we just like to look at some of the how they launder information. Like Washington Post, we showed the Joe Biden lying earlier. This is another one. Yep. CNN tweeted, two men in Uganda are facing separate charges of aggravated homosexuality, an offense punishable by death under the country's controversial new anti-gay laws. So everyone reads that and goes, oh my gosh, They're Uganda. They're just executing gay people. They're killing gays. This is so bad. We got to stand up for these people. These guys are innocent. And then the uh, Community Notes Twitter said, one man is accused of having a sexual relation with a disabled man, the other of a sexual act with a 12-year-old child. Both are charged with aggravated homosexuality to find a same-sex relations with someone who is HIV positive, a child, an elderly person, or disabled. Law sounds pretty fine to me. So headline and subtext are two different yeah. things to CNN. Yep. So. But to the Muppets, you get them mad and they'll burn down all the stuff. Yep. And they go, oh, actually, those were sexual predators. Those were disabled people <laughs> and a child. <laughs> and it's go, but we already burned down the Ugandan capital, right? Oops. Whoopsie. Well, yeah, exactly. We already sent the UN in. Um, all right, Urban Decay, don't get too down, don't get too depressed. We have Urban Decay coming. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you say that every time. It's like, it gets worse it gets with Urban worse. Decay. All right, the looting the power tools. Oh, yeah, this is, these guys eat this? Tales all this time. These guys eat this with their families? So, the, 
They're stealing all the power tools. Milwaukee. Couldn't get Makita? Milwaukee. Is Taking their time too, these young African American gentlemen. Maybe one white, maybe one. These teens. Asian guy, there he is, filming. This isn't the country the Asian guy wanted to come here for. Yeah, hey. Certainly not. So, do they eat that with their family? Does that hurt the teeth, the steel? I, uh, so, here's the, drill the thing. Bits. These guys know the value of hard work. Of course. Which is why they steal the power tools and sell them to people who work very hard. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it funny that those tools might or likely are to end up in the hands of illegal immigrants or very recently asylum seekers who are taking the jobs that these thieves like would Could otherwise do? have had, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a, it's a microcosm of what, what's going on in the world right now. Yeah, it's a sign of the times. You're stealing the power tools to sell to an illegal. To Who's going to outwork you. And, and drive the, your yeah. wages down when you could have just gone straight to the job with the power tools. But that's life in the big city, baby. And that's why we have a podcast. We could have <laughs> cut. We could have told you this, right? Yeah. It's like, hey guys, instead of stealing, why don't you just go become construction workers? Yep. Uh, let's go to the, the next story of the girl who got murdered over sweet and sour sauce at McDonald's. You can relate to this a little bit. Well, a uh, teenage girl, <laughs> 16, is stabbed to death during fight over sweet and sour sauce outside of McDonald's in Washington D.C. Uh, so it's a 16-year-old who got stabbed by another 16-year-old. This happened at like 2 a.m. on late Sunday night, actually right before school starts, the day before school started. Uh, stabbed to death. It, it, there was a fight in the car. I'm assuming there's only one sauce and maybe two or th to three orders of nuggets. Um, that can that can drive you crazy. That, you ever get a full McDonald's order and they don't put any of the sauce in? Yeah. And you're what? You're eating dry nuggets and dry fries? It gets greasy quick, so I understand. It, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, and the funny part is in court on Monday, the teenager said she had acted in self-defense during the incident on Sunday. So it's like still trying to make bail, still trying to get out. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, this kind of is a broader thing. Like, do you guys remember when we covered the man accused of the cold fries murder? Yes, yes, so yes. There was man a man accused of shooting NYC McDonald's worker over cold fries slapped with 2020 murder charge. So uh, these things tend to happen. Um, certain types of people can blow a fuse when there's a sauce or a cold fries or some sort of minor disagreement. And so we were talking about this, me and Fleckus, the shark deaths... Like, you know, there's there's weird ways to die, right? Shark attacks. Five to six a year. Vending machine deaths. Two a year. And now we're kind of creating a new category called like McDonald's condiment and food it's disagreements. It's black people arguing at McDonald's. And it's... <laughs> it's going up. <laughs> it's, I don't know what to say. It's going up. It's way up. Um, and it's funny because obviously these types of news stories, uh, the headlines are crazy, sweet and sour sauce. But really it's just some maniac who was willing to kill, gets into yeah. a minor disagreement, and then kills. Exactly. They didn't kill over the sauce. It's not like, give me the sauce, and yeah. stabbing them in the it's neck. It's like something as stupid as the sauce snapped the person into a kill trance where yeah. they just like went red or whatever it's called and then just started fighting to the point where they're going to finish someone and kill them. And then by the time they come back to... It's like, oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. It was over sweet and sour sauce. And the person's just like bleeding out and yeah. dead. So it's like not the sauce that makes them do it, but something as stupid as the sauce makes them snap into a kill trance, it's, which is the huge difference. It's being a certain kind of low IQ person yeah. is what I would call it. It makes you it. freak out. Yeah. So, so that's um, bad. So yeah, stay tuned. I mean, that's. I think it's going to pass vending machines soon. Oh, the it's, vending machines falling over. Yeah. Oh, it's, so. way, it's past shark attacks. Yeah. I think. Uh, let's go to the taser, the taser Seattle robbery. Yeah, this was an interesting tactic because I think these robbers didn't really need to do this. Hmm. Nice Asian man walking up to his door in uh, the Seattle area. They call this a transitional area. You got to get in your house pretty quick. These guys should steal power tools. It's easier. Yeah. So they take all his shit. They tased him. And they tased him. So the guy, the first guy had a gun. He was already going to give you all his shit. And then you tase him. 
Yeah, and then if the guy is vaccinated, his heart could go a little explodey from that tase. Any sort of weak heart or ailment, and the taser becomes a deadly weapon, and then you're getting a life in jail for robbery, murder, over $80. And a, yeah, and a locked iPhone 8. <laughs> so <laughs> A locked iPhone 8. <laughs> yeah, uh, hit him update with his the, phone, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. And the chain? Gold-plated. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. You hit him with the taser uh, for really nothing. Let's go to the the last one, the uh, drug rehab guy. Yeah, let's see wh what some of the brainiacs are doing here. Arresting and locking people up will not stop overdoses. Overdose prevention centers will stop overdoses. Yeah. So we have. Yeah. If you say it enough times, it might come true. It's like overdose prevention centers will stop literal overdoses that are happening right now. Because a person who's overdosing goes in and they give him Narcan or whatever, but it won't stop the overdosing. It'll mm -hmm. just stop the overdoses. Yeah. You know, it'll stop the ones that are currently happening. It's not going to stop them from happening. Uh, and so they have like these prevention centers this guy's talking about. You know how street rats love to make appointments. You know how fentanyl addicts love to call up and, and they check in and they do the process <laughs> yeah. of getting Having in. a little bit of a problem. I'm going a little too far with this with this trank. Hey, this is Michael. Yeah, I may be having an overdose right now. Can I show up? Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. So that's kind of like the thing. They apply rationale and logic to people who just really aren't rational or There's a, logical. Exactly. There's a big thing that happens like you're not just some fentanyl addicted animal, mm -hmm. like looking to steal something and get the money from it for your next hit. It's like, no, I, you know, I really, I would love to get off the fentanyl, but it's just so good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there uh, was a funny mimetic Sisyphus tweet or not funny, but he made a good point. And everyone's uh, he goes from the original quote and it says, why not impose capital punishment on the dealers? Yeah, that would stop it pretty quick. If you were caught selling fentanyl and you get the death penalty for that, you'd probably stop sell fentanyl. Yeah, you'd probably stop pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, this kind of goes with this type of guy overdose centers. This is the type of guy who wants the social workers to respond to the domestic violence. Mm -hmm. This is the type of guy who thinks anybody in prison is wrong. Abolish yeah. prison type energy. Abolish prisons for sure. And it's just the absolute wrong way to think about life. And uh, I feel like these guys have had their time, you know, to an extent. Like and we've, we've seen it play out how they wanted to. San France, to, and here yeah, we are. Exactly. So, so oh, your, your idea is less prisoners and release the criminals. We've been doing that. Mm -hmm. And everything got a lot worse. There were some tweets about uh, that exact thing. It says prison abol abolition has big underpants gnomes energy where it's just abolish prisons Two qu step one, abolish prisons. Step two, question mark, question mark, question mark. Step three, society is now peace and love and violence disappears. Yeah. So let's get rid of the prisons. And then Mimetic Sisyphus had a great point. A man rapes and murders your wife. He's caught and sentenced to therapy. You can go end his life. The worst that will happen is you'll have to go to therapy too. Congrats. You fundamentally transformed our relationship with one another. Yeah. It immediately becomes the Wild West. Wild West utopia, not so much. Just a lot more killings without state involvement is yeah. what I would say. <laughs> just basically you guys can do whatever you uh, want and then the state will make you go talk to some lady here and there. You ever see The Purge? <laughs> you ever see the movie The Purge? Exactly. All right, let's move on. Let's not get too down or too depressed. Uplifting Gold is here. Let's start with the Culver's worker. Uh, when you were talking about autists earlier, this is what I envisioned. This is so. how they operate. 93 degrees in Franklin, Tennessee. The Culver's guy's hustling. Hustling, running, working hard. Heavy foot. Heavy feet, though. Wearing the outfit. Shirt tucked in. Runs back, I bet. Gets the number. Goes. Goes. Out of there. Look at that. And then the other girl doesn't do the task right, cries, and asks to go home. And then that kid's got to work double. A tale of two autisms. Yeah. Right? That's our boy. Yeah. If you're that kid or know that kid, send us uh, his info and make sure he likes us, and yeah. we'll send him some stuff. And I'm doing that autism as a bit thing. Yeah. He, we don't even know if he's autistic, and yeah. he's not, maybe. And if he is, it's fine. He's crushing it. He's Look at this. That was great work ethic. Yeah. Better than most people. All right, let's move on to the next one. The men eat all the steak stat. Yeah, this is just a headline that came out. Just 12% of Americans, mostly men, are eating half our beef supply, new research shows. I recognize some of those numbers. Yeah. 12% <laughs> and half? It's like the Pareto principle, but for like men doing 
stuff. Yeah. It's only the only 12% of the population is eating 50% of the steaks. I know some of those numbers. <laughs> what are those from? Um, that's I'm in that I'm in the 12%. Yeah. I went to Publix the other day and I broke a record. And the lady working there said this is the most meat I've ever seen someone buy at once. Which is crazy because people have like barbecues here. People have group things and and I loaded the freezer. And it was just for you. And then the fridge started like feeling a little warm. And I was like, oh no, I'm about to lose five hundred dollars of fucking steak. Yeah. But we didn't. It's all frozen. I'm gonna eat steaks for life. Smart. All right. One um, month. Six for life, <laughs> one and a half months. For one, for four weeks. Yeah. Uh, another uplifting gold, uh, our backyard. Our new backyard has pineapple bushes. Yeah. What are they called? Pineapple plants? I don't know. I always thought pineapples grew kind of like coconuts, I kind of imagined. Yeah. Where they always kind of like hang down. These things are in bushes. There's like there's a video here of it. But they're in these like little straw bushes, and then they're like this big – they like these little pineapples. Junior pineapples. They yeah. looked like fake. They looked like ornaments or something. And then sure enough, it's pineapples. So we got pineapples in the wild at our house. Coconuts as well, too. So that's, that's uplifting. Yeah. Um, intruder mauled by two pit bulls. Yeah, so this is partially uplifting. Uh, intruder, 21, and they used the fucking high school graduation pick of the intruder, uh, is mauled to death by two pit bulls while trying to break into Georgia home. Homeowner finds his body on the porch the next morning. So broken clock gets it right twice a day. Unfortunately, those pit bulls now have a bloodlust. Yeah. So <laughs> as a tool of uh, home self-defense, you only get to use the vicious killing pit bulls one time. And then you kind of got to yeah, put them exactly. out to pasture. So, All right. Let's move on to the guy in the movies. This guy went to the movies and sat in the wrong seat. And then they tried to get him out. And then he had just like a boiling point moment where he had no shame and just blew out. You have to have mine. It's not yours. Go seat. away. That's not gonna I happen. pay my money. I have a right to, to it. sit in your seat. Correct? Yes, that's my not, seat. That's not your seat. How can you tell us that my seat? Because your ticket has your seat number on it. Whatever. Let's find it. Whatever. This can easily Do be your own policy. No, you're, you're no, arguing. I'm going to be an idiot because you're being an idiot. Oh, I am not. I'm a patron here. Okay, and I'm trying to find your seat. And this will seat. be the last time that I come to this imagined theater. So I, I paid I, my money. Great. Does please, anybody please here come think back. that please this is back. actually uh, a, a, a thing where it's like it doesn't matter where you sit? It's not a side seating. It is. Go oh, sit in your own seat. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Please, sir, let's find your seat and we can start. No, the I'm not going to. And Let's I'm get to when the other lady comes. You did. Listen. Does further. that mean? Are you gonna listen? All right, go ahead. Be go ahead. Be my pass. Okay. At this point, you are disrupting the show for these fine folks. We're going to ask you to leave. We'll get you a refund, though. I'll be nice and get you a refund. I don't know. I might want to be taken out in handcuffs now. Sir. <laughs> I've paid That's my That's the lie. I don't understand why it and then is. Let's get, I'm just going to skip to the end and let's get a look at him. Here he is getting up finally. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy your movie. Kind of looks like a trans person Yeah. at the end. This is just someone who doesn't want to be involved in society. Yeah. anymore he's like i'm done i've reached a boiling point but that's you're you're making a good point for men with long hair mm. especially a fat man with long hair not the time for that combo it's out guys you're, uh you're trans adjacent or you're evolving to trans potentially you could just be a lazy trans who got no surgery couldn't afford anything it's so pig so pig you know how they are yeah but how about you know what I might be. I might want to be taken out in handcuffs. <laughs> Just like uh, taking it to that level to someone who works at the movies. I might want to be taken out in handcuffs. Fifteen dollar movie. All that for Barbie. Yeah, let him see it. All right, last clip of uplifting gold. A Miss America pageant winner um, was a woman with seven kids who's like a nice Christian woman, and they asked her this. Step up to the mic. I'll read it for you twice. When have you felt the most empowered? When have you felt the most empowered? I have felt this feeling seven times now as I bring these sacred souls to the earth after I hold that newborn baby in my arms. The feeling of motherhood and bringing them to the earth 
is the most empowering feeling I have ever felt. Isn't that nice? Seven kids and she's looking like this? And she wins the beauty pageant. Oh, they really teeter up with that question, too. How do you feel empowered? <laughs> oh, you little bitch. You know? <laughs> Seven fucking kids. Yeah, so that's great. That's good to see that winning. Better than someone who had a bunch of abortions or who's trans. It's nice to you see. You have to bring that up. You have well, to balance it out. You have to balance it out because that's the other option. Okay. That's fair. There's well, only two ways. There's two streets. Which way, Western man? Seven kids or trans and whatever? Exactly. And the winner is going to be one of them. Yeah. They have to pick one. Well, that's the end of the episode. Other Fleckus talks in the book. Is there anything we missed? Uh, No. Uh, it, it, like, we had a lot of days that were off the computer doing yeah. physical manual labor stuff. So we hit the stories we thought uh, we liked and we saw, and uh, we're back into the swing of things. New studio, there were, same there, show. There were so many days off the computer. Yeah. It was crazy. So I've never had it like so that. So bear with us as we get back up to speed. And then every time you drive the U-Haul and a truck passes you, it goes like that the wind pocket yeah and then in my head i was like all right we're probably gonna have a hundred of these today and you have to go one for one it's not like a how did you do out of 10 it's either a one or a zero yeah you either didn't die or you died yeah and we did it on every single one but there were some sketchy ones so we made it uh, a lot of people dm me saying hope you guys got there safe thank you we did we, um, we kept it 100, and we're back and looking to crank out the next 100. Exactly. Another 100 episodes coming your way. FleckusMerch.com for the new podcast shirt. People have been getting that, and they're all being delivered. So I hope you guys like those new shirts. They're a very cool design. And also free Big Don shirts are still available as well. FleckusMerch.com. Join FleckusTalks.com for all the exclusive bonus content that you've missed. Uh, and that's it. And that focus talks to the bugs. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. We will see you at the next one on Friday. See you on Friday. One hundred. I might want to be taken out in handcuffs now. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy your movie.